The Time Traveler's Guide to Not Getting Caught. Chapter 11. That time I went back to 2010 to date my babysitter. So I finished watching The Departed, and now I'm feeling a little tired. I mean, I had just traveled back to the 1920s and witnessed an acquaintance of mine get shot in the face, and I was just a little spent. It's the type of fatigue that only happens after you see someone you know get shot in the face after traveling back 100 years in time. Anyway, so I take the tens of dollars I'd earned from my mafia time, and I spend it on a Thai massage, and just kind of collected myself, you know? Like refocus on what really mattered most to me. And that's when I decide that just happened to be having sex with the babysitter. Now I gotta say, of all my time traveling, this was the adventure I was looking forward to most. I mean, sure, it was only like 10 years ago, and I wasn't going to be meeting anyone famous, but I would also be using my knowledge of the future to win over the love of my life, and at the same time make a lot of money, because I was gonna bet on sporting events, like in Back to the Future 2. So I set the date and tudes back to when I was just a teenager, and then, I was back in 2010. And you know what? It looked a lot like 2023, but with more hope and less despair. Now I know what you're wondering. You're wondering, is it really ethical for me to go back in time to get rich and win over the love of my life? And the answer is, yes. Yes, it is ethical. And why don't you just mind your own business, okay? You know how difficult it is finding love and getting rich? The answer is very difficult. And since I just happened to find a time machine that would allow me to do both, why would I deprive myself of even the littlest bit of happiness? I bet you're feeling pretty bad for judging me now, aren't you? So now that I'm back in 2010, the first thing I do is I go straight to Vegas so I can bet on sporting events. So I head to Caesars Palace, because why not? And while I'm there, I'm thinking, maybe I should go to Caesars' actual palace and compare the two. But then I figured I'd probably just forget all about wanting to go when I was done with Vegas, which I totally did until this very moment when I started retelling my story. So I go to the sports book, and I make several bets across different games that I had written down on a cheat sheet before I left. But instead of making sure I'd win every match, I purposely bet wrong on a few games so that I wouldn't draw any suspicion. So I sit down and I order a Cosmopolitan, but the waitress gives me a look like I should be ordering a manlier drink. So I pretend like I'm joking and I change my order to whiskey. And then she gives me a look like, yeah, that's what a man orders. And just as she's about to leave, I shoot her a smile and I say, and make it a double. And I swear she swooned. So then she goes and she brings me my drink and I take a sip and I'm immediately disgusted by it. But she looks at me and asks me what I think of the drink and I say, got anything stronger? And she says, we have Bacardi 151. And I nod and I say, yeah, bring me that. And as she's leaving, I stop her and I say, and make it a double. So she gets me the drink and she waits for me to take a sip. So I take a sip and I am in total agony as this lava travels down my esophagus. Or is it magma since it's in my throat? So I do my best to hold back tears and I say, mmm, now that's a drink. So she finally leaves and I feel relieved because now I can let the tears stream down my face. (laughs) And that's when some guy walks by me and sees me crying and he sneers at me like I'm some sort of pussy. Like I'm the type of guy who's too afraid to invade Russia in the dead of winter. So I hang out at the sports book as all the games play. And that's when I realize how boring gambling on sports is when you already know the outcome. Like, excruciatingly boring. But nonetheless, I persist and I hold on until all of the games end. And just as predicted, history repeats itself. And I collect a thousand dollars in winnings. Now instead of stopping while I'm ahead, I decide to keep Biff Tannening the whole thing. So I take my money and I bet on more games until I turn the thousand dollars into ten thousand dollars. And then I turn the $10,000 into $100,000. And the next thing you know, I had made $1 million. And it was at that point that Caesar's Palace comped me a suite. And I'm thinking, what a world we live in. I cheat and steal a million dollars from this casino. And then they give me free stuff. So the next day, I decide to take my business elsewhere because I didn't want to piss off any scary people at the casino by winning two days in a row. So I head down to the Mirage, and I spread my million dollars over a few games, again making sure I lose some but win most of them. And then I take a seat at the sportsbook when a waitress comes up to me and asks me what I'd like to drink. And unlike last time, 
I wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. And by that, I mean I wasn't going to order a girly drink. So instead, I instantly say, Bacardi 151. And then she's about to leave, and that's when I stop her and say, and make it a double. So she leaves, and then she returns with my drink, and she's eyeing me like she wants to see me take a sip. But I put it on the table, and I say, I like to let it settle first. And then she gives me a look and leaves. Again, I force myself to sit through a boring day of games, and yes, I know I could have just fast-forwarded ahead, but I wanted the cameras in the casino to see me there rooting for the games because that's what someone who bets a million dollars does. So the games end and I wind up turning my million dollars into... Well, look, let's just say I got really, really rich. Like, so rich I could subscribe to every single streaming service for the rest of my life and not be worried about money at all. Yeah, that rich. It was at this point of time I thought to myself, well, what an idiot I am for not doing this when I first got the device. I mean, making money is a lot of fun and so much better than going back in time just to meet a bunch of dead people. Now that I had Biff money, I just needed to figure out how I was going to woo my babysitter. I mean, she isn't your typical girl. She isn't just enamored by wealth. I mean, I'm sure the money helps, but she wouldn't just fall in love with a rich guy. She needs a smart and confident man. Now you might be wondering why I'm so infatuated with this girl. So let me tell you. My mom never trusted me when I was younger. I wasn't a bad kid by any means, but she always figured I was up to no good. So I had a babysitter up until I was 14 years old. And from 12 to 14, this glorious 24-year-old woman was my babysitter. You know, there are some people you meet in your life that just have the it factor, like my babysitter or Socrates. And when you meet that special person, it hits you hard. Now, I was hit hard when I was a kid, but I knew she and I could never be together because of the age difference. But now, we were the same age and I was more mature and had traveled the world and could talk to her about more than just video games. So this was my time. This was the time when I would finally get a chance with the love of my life. And I know the phrase love of my life gets thrown out there a lot, but this time, I really mean it. For a moment, I felt bad about exploiting my time traveling device to get the love of my life to fall in love with me. But then I realized that this is why I found the device in the first place. This was the grand writing of my life. I had been wronged by being born 10 years too late or by her being born 10 years too early. Either way, because of this device, age was no longer an issue. Now that I was an adult in 2010, I could finally woo the unwooable girl. And then we get married and have kids. And because of the time traveling device, I will have produced new life into this world. Not counting, of course, my prehistoric child, which now that I think about it, before my babysitter and I have kids, I should have her do a 23andMe just to make sure she isn't one of my descendants. Or maybe I should actually have her do it before we have sex. Nah, I'll just wait before we have kids. So I leave Vegas and I first spend some of my Biff money to buy a Lamborghini. But the thing that sucks about cars from 2010 is that even the expensive ones don't have the technology that the mediocre ones from 2023 have. Like, I just spent $100,000 on a Lamborghini and here I am having to use CDs like I'm some hobo. So now I had a lot of money, a nice car, even though it had a shitty CD player, but one thing I was missing was a nice place to stay at. Since I was stinking rich, I could stay anywhere I wanted to. So I just decided to stay at the Four Seasons because it's a lovely hotel with nice amenities and I wanted to impress my babysitter when I took her back to my place. And no, the Four Seasons didn't pay me to say that, although I wouldn't mind if they did. I always love having more money. So this was my plan. I was going to run into her one day and introduce myself as a very important businessman in the city. And she would be like, oh, that's cool. Let me show you around. And I would be like, yeah, that'd be great. Then she'd fall in love with me. We'd get married and have kids. I figure at some point I would tell her I'm a time traveler, but I certainly couldn't just start out with it because she wouldn't believe me and then she'd never fall in love with me. For this to work, she was going to have to think that I was a businessman and get to know me before I told her about the time traveling. So now the question was, where could I accidentally run into her? I had to figure out where she would want to run into the man of her dreams. But I honestly couldn't figure it out, so I thought I'd just stake out her house and follow her to wherever she goes, and then just run into her like I was there by coincidence and not at all because I was stalking her. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So I drive my Lamborghini to her house, and 
and I park out front. And that's when I realize how conspicuous I was just sitting in a Lamborghini outside of her house. So I drive to a rental place and I rent a Nissan Maxima because I figure nobody's going to notice a Nissan Maxima on the street. So I pick out the most generic Nissan Maxima I can get. And once again, I have to get a lousy CD player. I mean, why even get a Lambo if it's going to have the same tech as a Nissan Maxima? So then I head over to her house and I park like 20 yards away and just start to stake it out. And I know I should be feeling creepy in this situation, but honestly, I was just feeling like a guy sitting in a Nissan Maxima in a suburban neighborhood. And that's when I got hungry. So I decide to go to Jack in a Box and get a spicy chicken sandwich and two tacos. But then I figure that it's probably difficult to eat tacos in my car. So instead I get fries and a Diet Coke. Because I was trying to watch my figure and Diet Cokes taste similar enough to regular Coke that it doesn't make a difference to me and it adds zero calories. So after I get the food, I drive back to her house and I'm sitting in the car, staking out the love of my life as I eat a spicy chicken sandwich from Jack in the Box and I'm thinking, does life get any better than this? I mean, seriously, I had been all over the world, all over time, but I was really enjoying just sitting in a Nissan Maxima with a Jack in the Box sandwich and french fries, sipping on a Diet Coke. I had my Christina Aguilera CD playing, and at that point of time I was thinking, even if I didn't wind up running into my babysitter, at least I would have had a good night. And then, as I'm halfway into my sandwich, I see the love of my life get into her Toyota Corolla and drive off and I think, oh it's go time. So I follow her through the neighborhood, but then I make a mistake by getting a little too close because she starts to suspect I'm following her. So she goes onto a big street and starts to drive really fast. So of course, I start to drive really fast because I don't want to lose her, but then she's going through a red light and I'm thinking, well, if I go through this red light, she's going to certainly know that she's being followed. But if I didn't go through the red light, I was going to lose her. So I slam on the Maxima's accelerator and I plow through that red light. And now the babysitter and I are in an epic chase. Now, of course, from her perspective, I'm some guy trying to kill her. But from my perspective, I'm just some guy trying to make her love me. And that's when I see her pull up to a police station. And that's when I make a hard left and drive away. I figured it would be best if I got a new rental car. So I turn in my Maxima and I rent a Ford Focus. Because I figured nobody's gonna think twice about a Ford Focus. But now I had a different problem. My babysitter had her guard up, so I couldn't just wait outside her house and follow her again. And that's when I remember, she not only babysat, but she also worked at a Forever 21 in the mall, so I think to myself, well that's great, I'll just go into the store and act like I'm a patron and get her number and make her fall in love with me, and then we'll have a family and that'll be that. But then I realized that Forever 21 is a store for girls, and it'd be weird for me to meet her there. So instead, I decide to wait across her store until she leaves and then stalk, I mean, follow. You know what? There's no way of making this sound any less creepy. But just remember, my motivation was pure. Like, I'm not trying to rape and kill her. I'm just trying to fall in love. So anyway, I get to the mall and that's when I realize the store across from the Forever 21 is a Victoria's Secret. And I can't just go in there and stand there staring out across the mall at the Forever 21. So instead, I just decide to sit at a bench and wait. Now to look inconspicuous, I buy a newspaper to read while I'm sitting there because it's scientifically proven that people look less conspicuous while reading a newspaper. So I start reading the newspaper, but then I quickly get bored because I'm reading a newspaper. So I walk over to the nearby pretzel stand to wait there, but the pretzel smells so good that I have to get one. And then I start eating, and that's when I spot my babysitter heading out of the Forever 21. God, I loved her. She seemed in good spirits as she walked past me, not even noticing who I was. But that's okay. I mean, I'm 10 years older, so it's understandable. Although it did kind of hurt my feelings that she didn't recognize me. And that's when I see her go into a nearby Froyo stand and I figure, all right, I guess I'm about to eat some Froyo. So I ditch my pretzel and I walk over to the Froyo store and I get a sample cup and then I try a sample of vanilla because it's the closest Froyo to her. And I look over at her and I say, mmm. You gotta try the vanilla. Now, it wasn't the first thing I wanted to say to the future mother of my children, but she seemed to think it was funny. So she looks back at me with those beautiful eyes and says, Never heard of vanilla. What's it taste like? My first thought was, Wow, the love of my life is an idiot. But then my second thought was, Oh, she's just messing with me and I'm the idiot. So I say, It tastes like heaven in a cup. 
Now, that wasn't the second thing I wanted to say to the future mother of my children. But again, she seemed to think it was charming. Which, honestly, made me judge her a little because I was sounding like an idiot. But then I figured, well, I shouldn't negatively judge her for just being nice and liking me. I mean, what is wrong with me to be upset at her for being nice? So she says back, well, I've never tried heaven in a cup before. And I say, well, then please, let me buy you your very own cup of heaven. And she sizes me up and says, well, can I get something other than vanilla? And I say, yeah, sure. So she gets the toffee and I get the chocolate. And then we walk over to the food court and I finally get out of my stupid comment rut and I start to become very charming and she is eating it up. And I am thinking, holy shit, I am sitting across from my old crush and she's digging everything I'm saying. This is truly amazing. So she asked me what brings me to the mall. And I'm about to say I'm a very successful businessman. But then something strange happened. Something so weird that to this day, I still can't explain. I look at her and for some inexplicable reason, I say, I'm a time traveler. And she looks at me like I'm crazy because that's a normal response a person would make. But then she says, prove it. So I proved it. Thanks for listening, and please subscribe and rate the podcast to help me get more of the positive attention I so sorely need. Follow the show on Instagram at Time Traveler's Guide Podcast and me at Anonymous Time Traveler 69. New episodes out Thursday nights at 8.